Hello and welcome to Policy Bazaar. I'm Arjun Bhagat. Now come December, we all start planning our winter and New Year's vacations with our kids and loved ones. So we're very careful while booking our tickets, comparing ticket prices and checking hotel options, tariffs and visas. However, one of the most important things that we tend to forget when we travel abroad is travel insurance. While it is mandatory to have travel insurance in many countries across the world, some don't require it. But that doesn't mean you and your family do not take it. In fact, travel insurance is a must and should be taken after careful thought. Travel insurance covers a lot of areas, not just loss of baggage or hospitalization abroad. Today, we look at travel insurance with Yashish Haya, co-founder and CEO of Policy Bazaar. And we look at all its ramifications. Uh, Yashish, welcome to the show. You. you know... Define for me why travel insurance is, uh, you know, so important, you know, before we get into the details of that. Let's understand the crux of travel insurance. Travel insurance at its heart is essentially a health insurance policy. So whenever you are traveling abroad, your base health insurance is not covered in those countries and the health insurance gets covered. However, in addition to that, uh, you also have things like loss of baggage, loss of passport, you, which, which does happen to people. Sometimes what happens is you do not know all the customs and the rules. Sometimes you can make a mistake uh, and cause liability to somebody, either unknowingly or knowingly. So there can, can be a personal liability that you may have caused to somebody. That personal liability gets covered by travel insurance. These are the primary things that get covered by a travel insurance. In some of the special ones, you will have additional things being covered, but these are, the, these are the main things. In addition to that, you know, your trip might get canceled. Your trip might get delayed. Your flight might get uh, delayed. You may lose your connecting flight. All these events do happen when we travel. And when those events happen, to cover for those losses, you have travel insurance. That's primarily so, what it so, is. So, you know, uh, let's go into it, um, you know, carefully. Now, what ends up happening is, you know, I'm going on a trip abroad, haven't really paid much attention to travel insurance. I call up my travel agent and say, you know, send me, you know, I need a travel insurance for me and my wife and my two kids. Um, we don't really go into the details. So is there anything that we need to ask or are the travel insurance packages you know, pretty, pretty good and comprehensive, even if you don't ask for specifics. See, most of Schengen essentially has got compulsory... Which is the European... Which is, which is yeah. most of the European uh, Union uh, has got compulsory travel insurance. You need to have it before you apply for a visa. And uh, most people treat it as a formality that, okay, let's get the travel insurance. And they, and they usually take the, you know, the lowest price one, which is, which is okay. However, they have to understand what kind of cover are they going to get for it. Is it $50,000? Is it $100,000? Is it $500,000? Because costs do tend to mount up very quickly. And while it, while it seems like $50,000 is 25 lakhs, uh, when you do start But from a European perspective of, of, or an you, American perspective, it's Yeah, yeah. Nothing. So um, my grandfather uh, spent $10,000 within about two hours in the U.S. Uh, not, not gambling, but in a hospital. <laughs> in a hospital. Right. And uh, so, so you, you end up spending costs very, very quickly. Now, that is a compulsory part. In addition, people need to understand what are their needs. Okay, personal accident, loss of baggage, these are the standard pieces that are covered. But would they also like their uh, home covered? Do they have any pre-existing diseases that they need to declare? Uh, because pre-existing diseases are not covered by every, every travel insurance. Do they have any uh, specific uh, requirements? Do they want to take a travel insurance once for, for each travel? So do they travel quite frequently? Whether they do, they can take an annual cover or do they want to take it every time? Of course, once they have these requirements in place, they should go and do a search and you know, figure out which is the best travel insurance policy that suits their needs and take that particular one. Also, depending on the country they're going to, especially if somebody's going to the U.S., out there the health costs tend to be extremely high. And one does need to uh, consider that. Otherwise, one can just go broke with the health costs very quickly. Right. Now, you know, when we um, talk about, let's go into the specifics of it. And as you said, there are certain standard, uh, you know, uh, certain standard features of our travel insurance plans, whether it's loss of baggage, whether it is um, health care. Are okay. there anything other, other than that, which is, you know, I've heard people say, you know, what if I'm hijacked or what if the plane yeah, is hijacked and I'm stuck in the plane for 21 days? So, uh, so you know, you do have, uh, if, if one is hijacked, you, you have various things like, you know, if you lose baggage or if you have a delay, there's a cost per day that is paid. If you are hijacked, you are paid a certain amount. It's about $300 to $500. And certain plans have it, certain plans don't have it. Now, $300 to $500 is not a very significant amount to be paid per day. But, okay, you know, if you're hijacked, it's a far more serious issue than, than financial compensation. You have, uh, uh, you know, some uh, frivolous ones also, like the golf hole-in-one that Bajaj Allianz has. You know, if you, if, you, if you manage to hit the ball in one go into the, into the hole, 
then you got to treat everybody around, and that cost of that treat up to a certain limitation is is taken up. As I said, you have uh, home guard policies where your home insurance is covered. You also have uh, policies where uh, you know uh, many other specific things can be can be covered. You have policies for students where you know if the student is not well, you can have the parent traveling all the way from India to meet with the uh, with the student in addition to whatever so, so those options are there but uh, you know let's go systematically um, what about senior citizens a lot of uh, you know older people travel yeah. want uh, so, so good comprehensive insurance <coughs> when they travel so what should so, they look at so technically uh, travel insurance is 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 mandatorily provided up to the age of 70 after 70 it's very difficult to get travel insurance so you need to speak specifically to get that travel insurance there may or may not be a medical one may ensure that uh, some of the uh, pre-existing diseases are, are not covered. And if you have pre-existing diseases, you need to be very careful about, about traveling abroad. Also, you have to remember that international travel, uh, you will not have your, uh, your travel insurance will only cover emergencies if you cannot go there for, uh, for a particular treatment. So if you have a heart disease, one cannot go abroad and try to use a travel insurance for, uh, for heart disease cure. Those are kind of things that you know senior citizens need to take care of. Does um, the insurer often ask senior citizens for certain test results, or is that they they may they may in case see usually you would have a form in which in the form if one declares uh, I have nothing wrong then it's then it's fine. But if there are certain uh, declarations specifically around pre-existing diseases, then those do need to be declared. And if they are declared, medicals may be called for. Also above seventy. Medicals may be called for because typically 70 is the is the cutoff age, and every insurer has a slightly different cutoff age. Some will give it up to 85, some will give it up to uh, 75. Now that doesn't mean a person cannot travel. A person still wants to travel, and hence they will be. If, if you are fit, you would have to give a certain declaration, and you would have to go through a medical if uh, that's that becomes necessary, and then you should get your health cover. But primarily, when as a senior citizen, one should very much focus on the types of diseases that will get covered the types of eventualities that will get covered because most likely at that age you're not going to get into a personal accident or into a personal life. You, you, you try to be careful of those things but something can happen. I've known so many of my friends when their parents were traveling somebody had a heart attack, somebody had something else. It does happen, you know, they happen at home, they happen abroad. And abro uh, Accidents happen, people. When you're traveling yeah. there, is, there is a little more stress, right, so uh, sometimes. So, so that, does, that does happen. Right, and um, you know, you touched upon this a little bit. You talked about uh, a lot of students going abroad yes. and traveling. Yes. Um, what about how does travel insurance cover them? Um, health, travel insurance, because those are very key components. Yeah. So, see, uh, unlike the usual travel insurance, which uh, in a single trip uh, can cover up to 180 days, and you know, uh, maximum 180 days of travel is covered under normal travel insurance. Under uh, the student travel insurance, one can cover up to two years. That's yeah. the most important thing. Most universities abroad require you to have travel, uh, the, 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 what they call the student health cover. Right. Uh, they require you to have it. It's essentially travel insurance. In this, of course, your basic health is covered. Your uh, personal accidents are covered. Uh, death is covered. You've got uh, the personal liability, which is if you cause liability to somebody else, that is covered. However, what is also covered is in case because of a disease, uh, you have something called a bail bond. In case one has a disease and one cannot complete the course, then the remaining term fees are paid by the insurer. And are a lot of the companies actually offering that? Yeah, a lot of, a lot of the companies are offering that. So one has to, one has to look, out, look out, but one has to be sure about the fact that when they do buy this plan, they do uh, so cover that. So this looks like an interesting plan. So if something does happen to the student not well, not able to complete the education, so is the there... Costs the costs are taken care of okay. by the insurance company. Also, if their parents need to travel, the costs are covered by the insurance companies. So uh, one of the important things when you take uh, student travel insurance is to ask your university what are the requirements of their, uh, of their health plan or their, or their travel plan and then search in India before traveling to find that and take that. The, what you would usually find is the cost of procuring it in India will be about half the cost of procuring it abroad. So uh, it, it's much better to buy it beforehand than go abroad and then have to pay a lot more and then wonder why didn't I take it? Because remember one thing: once you once you leave uh, the country, you cannot buy this plan when you are abroad. You have so to it buy has this to plan. Be bought. It has to be bought yeah. before you start your travel. Once you started your travel, you cannot buy it from abroad 
and have it. That, that's, that's not correct. You know, some people do organize that, but that's not correct. Now, another aspect that we touched upon was when you're traveling abroad with your family, uh, you know, you've left your home here, your household goods are here. Yes. Um, explain to us what kind of, um, you know, uh, protection one can get through um, travel insurance in that. See, one of the important things is even if one has home insurance, which most people in the country do not, by the way, uh, when you are traveling more than 30 days, your home insurance will not cover you uh, for that period unless somebody visits the home every 30 days. And hence your home is at risk. Uh, things do happen, whether it's a flood, whether it's a subsidence, whether it's a, a theft. Uh, these, these things are known to happen. Uh, one only believes they don't happen to themselves. So all these situations where the construction or the materials inside uh, can be damaged, can be covered under certain health insurance company uh, 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 plans. So that's part of the travel insurance, uh, or is it a separate insurance. cover? No, you can get it along with certain travel insurance plans. So one has to search around, but these these are these options are available where uh, uh, one can look for a uh, for a uh, home cover. One can also cover pre-existing diseases. There are certain plans in the market where pre-existing diseases. Somebody's had a heart attack. Uh, does that mean they can't travel uh, because a heart attack will not be covered or whatever? You know, heart disease would not be covered. Certain pre-existing, there are certain plans which do cover it still. And, uh, you know, they may be a little more expensive, but you need to be aware of what you're buying. What about for people, for executives? I mean, I know, uh, for uh, instance, for you, you travel a lot. Yes. You, you travel a lot. Now, do you end up buying uh, an insurance every time you travel? Or is, uh, are other options available where you can buy multiple insurance uh, so, so covers? It, uh, or how it does entirely, that work? It entirely, so you have two options. One is a single trip travel, and one is the annual trip travel. Now, the single trip travel is usually for people who want to travel less than, like, maximum two times a year. After that, the annual trip becomes far more economical and far more convenient. You don't want to go and, you know, make a procurement every time. Paper work yeah. done so, and all so that. the annual purchase, if you want to travel, from, you know, two or more times, actually, more than once if you want to travel, you should take the, take the annual plan. It, uh, it does help you quite a bit more. Now, one has to also see what does one need. If a person already has health cover, both if, if somebody is a very frequent travel to one particular country and already has health cover both in India as well as in that country, then their travel insurance is essentially covering uh, stuff like uh, loss of uh, baggage, loss of uh, uh, passport. Flight cancellations, delays. And if you're careful, if you're careful, sometimes credit cards or bank accounts have these benefits attached to them. So just you, you, have, to, you have to watch out. Some, sometimes the Amex cards or diners card will already have these basic pieces of, you know, loss of baggage, loss of things attached to them. And so, so you, have, you, you shouldn't over-insure. Sometimes, sometimes you find, you know, you over-insured. So I'm just, you know, uh, for that 1% of customers, it may not be the right one. But, yeah, for mostly you should take our annual plan. Right, Yashishwa. We're going to continue uh, this uh, discussion. We're also going to take uh, viewers' questions. Sure. But uh, it's now time for a short break. Uh, you can write to us on Twitter at policybazaar underscore in or ask at policybazaar.com. We'll see you shortly after this break. Keep watching. We've met before. Uh, oh, Chola MS is also a part of Murugappa. Chola from Murugappa? Yes. Murumandal is from Murugappa. Paris? Paris part of Murugappa? Paris Agro, also from Murugappa. Kumi Abrasives. I didn't know Kumi is a part of Murugappa. Oh, TI. TI is a part of Murugappa. BS in Hercules. It's a part of Murugappa. Bet we met. Murugappa. Closer. Come on. 2007 called. It wants its camera phone back. How's this for a drama shot? Why aren't we getting closer? With the Nokia Lumia 1020, we got the best seats in the house. Meet the Nokia Lumia 1020. With 41 megapixels and reinvented zoom, nothing else comes close. Are you tripping? Are you tripping? Are you tripping? Or die trying. The MTS Emblaze Ultra. Now on 3G Plus Network. 
Let's look into future India with BP, where energy makes over a billion lives better. Energy discovered in the deepest waters and seen even through the rocks. With investments in lubricants, oil, gas and petrochemicals, we'll fuel this future together. BP in India, there is energy in this partnership. Siddhapur. Dur-dur se log aate hain yahan par duniya ka sabse kathin kaam karne. Maa ka shraad. ये कपिल आश्रम है और ये बिंदु सरोवर ये पानी नहीं है बेटे बेटियों के आंसुओं का सागर है कहते हैं सरस्वती नदी यही लुप्त है सरस्वती माँ का एक और नाम ये वो स्थल है जो हमें जोड़ता है माँ के प्यार दुलार से उसके उपकार से एक अनचुकाए उधार से सिद्धपुर गुजरात माँ के साथ की एक मात्र पावन भूमि को वायरल और डाइट राइन दी एम टी एस एम्बलाइज अल्ट्रा नाउ ऑन थ्री जी प्लस नेटवर्क जमीन पर देखिए क्रिकेट की एक रोमांचक जंग इंडिया स्टोर ऑफ साउथ अफ्रीका लाइव ऑन टेन क्रिकेट एंड टेन एच डी Welcome back. Uh, now, Yashish, we're talking about travel insurance. Uh, when does the policy actually start? The moment you board the plane or the ship or however you are traveling or the train, the moment you board it and uh, take off, from that point onwards it starts. And the moment you land back, it stops. Uh, that's, that's how it is. If you, before you travel or if you do not travel, you may cancel the policy. There is no problem. But once you've started the travel, you cannot cancel the policy any longer. One more important thing, as I said, once you've started the travel, you cannot buy the policy any longer. So if you if if you are traveling from here, uh, you've landed in uh, you know Dusseldorf and you're going towards uh, the U.S., you cannot at the Dusseldorf airport. So it airport, has to start before you. cannot you. at the Dusseldorf airport get onto the internet and buy a plan. You got to buy it before you take off from the Indira Gandhi International Airport. Right. All right. So now it's time for viewers' questions. We've got uh, Vishal Agarwal from Jodhpur. He's 38 years old and he says, I've got an ICICI Prudential Life Stage Assure Pension Plan. Um, he's uh, taken it for three years. Uh, he's been paying for it for three years now at 20,000 rupees um, each. Uh, so he's invested about 60,000. And he asks, should I continue or withdraw it? And of course, Probably because the value has come down, but there must yeah. be reason for that. So he would notice that the value of his investment would be about half of what he's invested. However, he should not get perturbed by that. Had he read into the details of the plan before procuring the plan, he would have known this is exactly how it is going to turn out. It's a very good long-term plan. It's a very bad short-term plan. So what essentially happens is your money from the first year is taken and not invested. So if you look at the plan after two years, whatever you've invested, it cannot be more than half the value. That's, that's very clear. So that's why the gentleman is looking at it after three years, and he would be seeing about between half to two-thirds of the value because the markets have come down a bit, et cetera, or, or gone up a bit. Now, the good part about the plan is if you continue after the 10th year, uh, loyalty bonuses start to come in. And essentially, the same first-year piece that was taken away gets put back, but after about 10 to 12 years. So you've got to hold to the plan for more than 10 years to get back what you have lost in the first year. If you break it after the third year, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's your loss and nobody else's loss because uh, you know, this is something you needed to know before you got into the plan. There was a cost, an upfront cost, which will be repaid to you in the long run. It's a long-term plan. You've got to hold on to it for the long term. So a little bit of patience there. A little bit of patience. All right. Uh, we've got uh, a viewer with us, uh, Shankar Jain. Go ahead, uh, Shankar. Uh, I have to buy a health insurance for my parents. My father is 59 years old and my mother is 53 years old. 
uh, they're broadly in good health. They don't have any major diseases like diabetes or cholesterol or high blood pressure. Uh, however, they had an accident in the past where they broke their leg, and uh, there's been uh, they've had a surgery which and they got operated upon. They're fine uh, overall, but sometimes they complain about knee pain and some level of back pain. And these are not uh, uh, very severe and they're manageable. So can you suggest what would be a suitable health insurance for them? Yes, Shish. So essentially, uh, the father is 59 and the mother is 53 and they're looking for a health insurance plan. Uh, as far as the accident is concerned, it should have no impact uh, on their long-term uh, health. And you know, essentially, uh, it should not have any medical issue whatsoever. They've got lots of options for both the parents. I would advise uh, the gentleman to take uh, two separate plans for the parents because they're, at an, they're, they're going to increasingly be at an advanced age. See, a health insurance plan is one of the plans that you buy for life. So it's going to continue you know, over, over time. And his uh, father and mother's health conditions may go in different directions or may take different courses. So it's no point putting them into clubbing them into one policy. He should take separate policies. I would suggest at current, maybe a three lakh rupee per uh, year policy for both of them. It uh, total would cost about 30,000 rupees, about 18,000 and 12,000, up to 15,000 rupees of investment, uh, up to 20,000 rupees of investment per year. One also gets a tax benefit. Right. So maybe if him and his wife are both working or him and his father are both working, both of them can invest and you can invest with somebody else. You can get a break on the entire 30,000 investment and uh, that, that would be, you know, that would effectively be about 20,000 investment. You get about 3 lakh rupees cover each. Chances are they will end up using it. Uh, hopefully they don't have to, but uh, chances are they will end up using it and it will be useful for them. If they can get critical illness, they should try to take a critical illness cover uh, uh, with it, with their advanced age. Maybe it's uh, feasible the, uh, the insurer may refuse to provide a critical illness, right. but they should attempt it. Right, uh, we've got Manpreet Singh from uh, Chandigarh, he's 25 and he says, I want to know about the Shubh Nivesh plan from SBI Life. I already have a policy from LIC where I'm paying a premium of 48,000, Jeevan, uh, Jeevan Anand. I'm a doctor and 24 years of age and can invest another 50,000. I want to get a lump sum after 25 years. Uh, uh, what would you recommend? Uh, so, you know, 25 years is a long uh, period of time. Uh, he's got one whole life plan. And he's taking another whole life plan. Now, a whole life plan is essentially... Uh, and he said he doesn't have any mutual funds. He doesn't have any mutual funds, etc. A whole life plan is essentially a, a low-yielding, uh, long-term uh, insurance plan. So if his objective, from whatever I'm hearing, he's looking not for insurance, but he's looking for that lump sum 25 after 25 years. Maybe he's planning for a retirement. Maybe, maybe he needs that cash for some reason. There are many other ways to get a much higher return. Uh, the first would be a... Uh, uh, you know, being in the bank for 25 years, he will, he will get a pretty good return from that. Uh, I would say better than most of the traditional uh, health insurance, uh, traditional uh, investment plans. In addition to that, you can look at, look at ULIPs because ULIPs are, you know, over the last 30 years, ULIPs have, or whatever, uh, you know, the share market has given a good 15, 17% return IRR every year, which is much higher than FDs, much higher than anything else. Over a 25 year period, I would certainly advise, look at the share market. India is a young country. It's a growing country. Over 25 years, the market should do phenomenally well. And, uh, you know, he should, he should look at something of that sort. I would certainly not advise, uh, you know, looking at a traditional plan from an investment point of view. If the objective is insurance, if the objective is critical illness, those plans are certainly available. So that needs to be really thought out. But he should think objective about it because he already has one and he's taking another one. He'll be investing one lakh rupees every year. I don't know how, what, how large a proportion of his... Uh, uh, savings that is, uh, it's, it's from, a, from a financial perspective not making sense. Makes sense to diversify a bit. Um, we've got uh, Chintan Kishore from Karnataka. He says, I'm 26 years old. I want to take a life insurance policy, a traditional <coughs> endowment plan he's looking, or, looking for. And he says, he's asked, so which is the best policy in the market, uh, which has good maturity returns. Uh, and he wants to uh, pay about 11,000 per year. He says, I've invested in Birla SL Vision. Uh, but I want to quit this, uh, please advise. Uh, so see, first of all, quitting any plan is not a good idea. As I said in the first question, most of these plans are long-term plans. If you read them before you buy them, which, which most people unfortunately do not, or if you take some you know, professional advice or you try to compare these policies, etc., before you buy them, what you will realize is most pl policies have a cost up front and they return you some loyalty bonus much later. So you only benefit if you hold on to the plan for a long period. The worst thing is to buy these plans and then three, four years later cancel them. That's, that's the worst possible strategy. And if the gentleman is trying to do that, 
and then buy another plan. Only the company gains as a result. No, no, it's okay. I don't think even the company gains. Because uh, they are looking for long-term uh, they, they are They are also interested in consumers. Nobody gains with a 50% lapse rate that we have in the country. If we have a 50% lapse rate, nobody gains. The companies don't gain. The consumer doesn't gain. And I, th and I don't think the regulator likes it either. The regulator also wants cons consumers to have, you know, when you buy something, you buy it for the long run. Why, why else are you buying it? Now, so this particular, uh, in this particular situation, I would certainly not advise him cancelling it. And before he buys the next policy, I'd like him to be very, very sure what does he want. Because all he said is something that gives good returns. If you want good returns, traditional plans are not what give you good returns. Period. You don't even have to go beyond that. They do not give you good returns. They usually will give, the maximum they'll give you a return of 6%. They cannot give you a return more than that and you should be able to get that return from an FD also. However, on an FD you will not get the tax break when you get the money back. Traditional plans allow disciplined investment. Traditional plans allow you to have a, 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 a term cover with your plan. Traditional plans protect, they, they provide protection, they provide guarantee and they provide a certain steady return at the time when you require it. So they essentially bring discipline, they bring normal returns and they give you the risk cover. That's what traditional plans are for and they're very long term, much longer term than FDs can be. FDs you don't get for more than 10 years. These can go up for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. That is the advantage. But you don't invest in it for high returns. That you will not receive. Right, uh, Yashish. On that uh, note, uh, that's all the time that we have. Thanks for joining us on the show. Um, you can write to us on Twitter at policybazaar underscore in or you can uh, email us at ask at policybazaar.com. And we'll see you next time on Policy Bazaar. Keep watching.